So let's recap first what we uh, studied last yesterday. Okay. In our very long lecture. <laughs> so we have, uh, you know, covered uh, the application of diodes in logic gates, and we explore two of them. And gate logic, or and oh, sorry, and logic gate and or logic gate. Okay. So these are the symbols for both. This is a symbol for AND, and this is a symbol for OR logic. Okay. But actually, the, the actual implementation is something like this guy or this guy. Okay. It's just a circuit. And this circuit, you know, we find we found that the output voltage, okay. Uh, is only two values. If the input is only two values, either high or low. And based on that, we found that the output uh, might be, uh, will be also high or low. And this is actually a digital circuit. Okay, and one of the applications of diodes. We also uh, go deeper in the circuit analysis of, of diodes. Okay. And we found that based on the circuit, maybe an input voltage of 0.7 is not enough for the diode to turn it on. And this is basically very clear here, for example, from this circuit that we take last time, yesterday. So the input, uh, the, the voltage, uh, the minimum input voltage in this circuit in order to turn the diode on, it's actually larger than 0.7. So look at the, the equation. The equation is, is equal, is the V input, input is equal to 0.7 plus something else. So this is basically larger than 0.7. Actually, the minimum value for input, uh, for the V input minimum is actually 0.7 at R2 equal to zero, or R1 equal to infinity. If R2 is zero, short circuit, or R1 is infinity means open circuit, or there is no R1 connected to the diode, V input minimum is equal to 0.7. But in general, the diode needs more than is a, is a, is a, is a source, okay? Uh, maybe larger than 0.7 or greater than 0.7 to turn the diode on. And this is equivalently for the zeners, for the zener diodes as well. To turn them on in the reverse bias region, in the breakdown, again, the minimum input voltage is, is larger than the breakdown, the actual breakdown voltage of the zener. It's the minimum value is V breakdown. But in the general case, we might need larger than V breakdown voltage. And this was very clear yesterday. The example that we took, or we explained, the breakdown voltage was only 10 or minus 10 in reverse, but the input minimum to turn the zener on was around, uh, I think, uh, 25 or, or 20, 20, I think. Yes, it was 20. Let, let, let us check. So, yes. It was, it was, what? It was 30 volt, 30 volt. Three times larger than the, the the breakdown voltage, which was ten. Okay, so we continue today in uh, in this lecture with circuit analysis because this is very important. Okay, to understand any application for the diode, we need to understand how to deal with the diode in a circuit, and actually for any application that we're gonna explore. 
we're gonna solve a, a, a problem first, and from this problem, we're gonna discover a new application for the diet. Okay. We are still in this, you know, game of finding the input minimum to turn the diode on. But now we change the circuit a little bit. So we removed this R2 that was in parallel with the diode, and we added this, uh, this VB here, this battery here, which I call it VB. It has a voltage equal to VB. And the same question. What is the minimum input that can turn this diode on in forward? Okay, so let's do that. Let's try to solve that. So solution. Let's start by A. What is the minimum input that will turn the diode on? So again, at the input equal to the input minimum, the diode is just on. What does that mean? The voltage of the diode is 0.7 and the ID is still zero. Once we, you know, go beyond the input minimum, there will be a current. We are on the transition point between the off and the on. Okay, so let's explore what we what the input minimum needs basically in order to do, to do that. So we have here the ground, okay, and we know for sure that the the voltage difference between this point and this point, which is zero now, is VB. So that point here has a voltage of VB. That's for sure. Any battery will increase, uh, has uh, its, its positive terminal voltage is larger than its negative terminal voltage by the amount or the value of the battery. At that point, when V input is equal to V input minimum, this guy is just turned on. Yes, the current ID is still zero, but the voltage here, the voltage difference or the voltage drop on the diode is 0.7. That means that this point, let's call it A, is greater than in voltage than this point by 0.7. So again, since VD is equal to 0.7, So VA is equal to, or let's say it in another sense. So let's call this, for example, it's B, point B. What is VD? VD is the voltage difference between A and B. So this is equal to VA minus VD. And the VB is actually equal to VB capital, the value of the of the the battery. So from that VA is equal to VB capital plus 0.7. It's just you know, uh, just very very obvious. So you know that the voltage of that point is equal to the voltage here plus that guy here, VB plus 0.7. But if you know, if you wanna break it more, you can do that in that way, but it's very obvious. Okay. Again, at V input minimum, ID is equal to zero. So, ID, is actually equal to this point minus this point over R. So Vn minimum 
because this point now has a voltage input of Vm minimum. We are analyzing the circuit at Vm equal to Vm minimum. Minus Va over R. But this is equal to zero. So Vm both minimum equal to Va, equal to Vb plus 0.7. So this is the minimum input that will turn the diode on. And again, just like the previous example, again, this input minimum is dependent on the circuit, you know, devices or parameters or elements. In the previous example, it was dependent on the value of the resistors, either the one in series with the battery or the one in parallel with the diode. Now it's dependent on the battery, the other battery in the, in the circuit. Good. Now let's go to B. For I, it says find, you know, uh, find VD and the ID when V input is equal to half, half a volt, 0.5 volt. Okay, so first we calculate V input minimum. It's equal to VB, and they said that VB is, uh, this is, I'm sorry, this is 1.4, this is not. One point four. So one point four plus point seven, this will be two point one volt. So since V input is less than V input minimum, this is 0.5, this is 2.1, then the diode for sure is off. It might be reverse. It might have a voltage, boost of voltage, but less than 0.7. We don't know, but it's off in all cases. And we are sure about that. There is no assumptions here. The only assumption is that you are correct about the value of the input minimum. <laughs> so you must check that. Okay. So if the diode is off, then ID for sure is equal to zero. So this is the first unknown for us. Because if uh, he asked it for ID and VD. Now let's calculate VD. So let's go back to the circuit here. So we have VR like this, we have V input like this, we have VB like this, and this is VD. So by simple cache of voltage low, V input is equal to VR plus VD plus VB capital. If ID is equal to zero, then VR which is equal to ID multiplied by R is also equal to zero. So this guy here is zero. So from this, the input is 0.5 equal to VD, which is unknown for us, plus VB, which is 1.4. So VD is equal to minus 0.9 volt. It's a negative. That means it's reverse. And here, let's look back to the circuit because we got some weird output here, some weird conclusion. So let's look at the input polarity and the diode. So the P of the diode is closer to the positive terminal. 
and the n of the diet is closer to the negative terminal. So it should be forward at least, right? Or wrong? Anybody have uh, any guess about this situation here? Why the diode is reverse? Although it's connected to the input as forward. So we are right. So what we got here is right. This is not, this is not, uh, this, is, this is correct. But why? Why it's reverse, although looking at the input, it's like it's connected as uh, forward. Well, VB is higher than VN. That's right. Yes, yes, yes. So don't, you know, mislead yourself by looking only at the input. You have two sources here. You have the input and also VB capital. You have two batteries, okay? Don't mislead yourself with only, by looking only at the input. No, you have two sources. So let's now analyze more or go deep more, okay, to, you know, verify what we got here, why it's reverse. So let's draw the circuit in another way. So this is the original circuit. You have VB here, which is 1.4. You have a resistor. You have this source, which is 0.5 volts. Good. So let's ask ourselves a question. Can we redraw this circuit again? Okay. By combining these two batteries? Yes. So everything here is better. I'm sorry, it's series. So the half volt battery is series with the resistor, series with the diode, series with VB. So everything is series. So it looks like we can, you know, model the circuit in another way or brought it in another way by combining, you know, when you, when you have two resistors like this, R1 and R2, you can redraw the circuit like this as one resistor and R1 plus R2. This is what we're gonna do now. So we're gonna move this, you know, this battery backward in that way. And if you miss something, because this is a tricky part here, just let me know, I'm sorry. Just let me know. Okay, guys, so I moved the battery, which is 1.4 VB backward, okay? And I just combine it in the same, you know, location of, just to make it easier for you. <laughs> I, I don't need to do that. But to make it easier or more, you know, imaginable for you. Okay? So you now you have to, actually they are in series. So you can combine them just what you have, com just uh, like this example here. This is equivalent to this example you can combine them in one battery. So let's draw the circuit in that way. So this is the diode. This is the resistor. And now I'm just, you know, draw it as one battery. And you can choose whatever terminal you have. If you choose it like this, then it's this battery is equal to 0.5 minus 1.4. Remember, they are in opposite directions. So this is actually minus 0.9 volts, which I can draw it in another way. Very clear. This is a diode, this is a resistor, and this is positive 0.9 volt. But now it's an opposite polarity. So it's going down. And now let's ask, let's ask ourselves the question, is this a forward or a reverse connection? The B is closer to the N, I'm sorry, the, the negative terminal of the battery, 
the n is closer to the positive terminal. So this is actually a reverse bias condition. And that's why we got a negative voltage. Because if you look at both batteries, not only the input, you will realize that the, you can imagine the circuit now as one battery and this battery will be connected in reverse to the diode. So that the diode is reversed basically and have a negative voltage. That's good. So let's now go and solve point two. Because in B, you have to solve the, according to the, the question, at V input equal to point 0.5 and V input equal to two. I'm sorry, three, not three. So let's solve when V input is equal to three volts. Remember V input minimum is equal to 2.1 volt. Am I right or wrong? Yes, it's 2.1 volt. So since V input is larger than V input minimum, you are very sure that the diode is on. Since the diode is on, VD is 0.7, that's it. Now let's do the Kirchhoff voltage law again. Vn equal to Vr plus Vd plus Vb. Two equal to Vr, which is Id multiplied by R, plus Vd, which is 0.7, because that is on, and Vb is three volts. So Id is equal to two minus 0.7. I'm sorry, the V input is, is, is three. I'm very sorry, it's, it's three. And the bat, the VB is, is two, basically. I'm sorry. For what? The input should be three. Yes. The input is three. And VB is one point, uh, yes, one point four. Yeah, that's, uh, that's a mistake. This is one point four. One point four. So three, not two, minus 0.7, minus 1.4 over R, which is one kilo ohm. So let's do one kilo. So this is actually point, what? Yeah, point 0.9 milliamperes. And it's positive. And we know when the diode is forward, the bias, the current uh, is flowing from B to N and it must be positive. And that's what we got here. Okay, so that's basically the solution of that problem. It's very nice, very neat. And we will go deeper now and into it. So let's say something here, okay? This is actually the the, the the problem that we just solved with is actually another application for the diode. It's called diode clipping circuits. What it means is that for some circuits with some configuration, just like the one that we saw, the diode has the ability to uh, make the output constant regardless of the input change. And that's what we have. So what I what we said here is, is the following. So this was a circuit. This is the input. Let's do it as an AC signal. Just a, a symbol for like, that it's very or oh, let's do it in that way. Just a battery. But this battery can be changed due to whatever, maybe bad source. Okay. And let's see what is the output here. We said that if the input is larger than the input minimum, 
VD is equal to 0.7. The diode is on and VD is 0.7. Whatever the value. Okay. So for example, if the input minimum, just like the example before is 2.1, if the input is equal to three, the diode is on and VD is equal to 0.7. If the input is equal to 10, diode is on, VD is equal to 0.7. If it's, this is, you know, the input is, you know, 1,000, which is not practical, but let's say so. Diode is on and VD is 0.7. How about the output? The, out, the voltage from this point to this point. It's all the time equal to VD plus VB. All the time. By Kirchhoff. In that particular condition, when the input is larger than the input minimum, the output is equal to 0.7 plus VB, and remember VB is a constant. And in that case, the output again, 0.7 plus VB. In that case, 0.7 plus VB. For any value larger than the input minimum, VO is constant equal to V. Uh, B plus 0.7. So if you have some, you know, some source that is not, that is a bad source, okay, unstable, for example, you know, can be changed easily. And you have some circuit, let's do, you have, for example, you know, a circuit. that is sensitive to changes. Some circuit, okay, that needs all the time constant voltage at its input. And you have a bad source here, unstable source. A source that has a lot of noise, okay. Then that configuration will protect the circuit because uh, uh, of course, in condition that the source here, Vs, always have a voltage larger than the input minimum. Of course, so this is the condition. So if you have uh, some sort of circuit that needs constant stable input, okay, for some value, you can have such, uh, some configuration like this. You can even do it in a better way. Remember in the example, VB was 1.4 volt, and I did this intentionally. You remember when the diode become forward, the, the, its voltage is constant 0.7. So we actually can repla replace this, this battery with two diodes. Again, this is a sensitive circuit. And we have 0 0.7, 0 0.7, 0 0.7. In total, 2.1, just like this one. And again, the condition here is that Vs is larger than the input minimum, which is 2.1, okay? And that's called the clipping. So you clip whatever the value in the input, you clip at uh, 2.1 in that example. Of course, you can control that using, you know, how many diodes you put here, you know, or if you have a battery, stable battery, also you can do that but people usually use uh, diodes. Okay. Now, one may ask a question. Why don't we use, so this is R1, so we want here 2.1. So for example, you can do that using voltage divider.
why we cannot or of course we can but why it's preferable to do that using diodes and don't not voltage divider any idea so this is also a valid configuration that may make the voltage constant at the input but why it's not good So it looks like we have some chat here. Okay, a resistor would have different voltage with, that's right, yes. That's that's very, you know, very valid. Okay, so whatever that, so this is, v, is VS here. VR2 is equal to VS multiplied by R2 over R1 plus R2. So whatever the VS is, it's dependent on VS. While here, if you are sure that V input, of course, the assumption again for both circuits that V input is 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 large is greater than V input minimum. But for that for that one, no, because if there is some instability in the input, if the input it changes, then this change will appear on R two because the voltage on R two is dependent on V uh, S. Okay, that's very nice. Let's have another example. We gotta prove, okay, what we have just, you know, we already proved it. This is another way of looking at the clipping, but clipping for AC circuits, in AC circuits. It is the same as, exactly the same. Except that the input here is AC, not DC. And it's just regular AC, the one that you, in your outlet at home. 110 volt RMS and 60 hertz. So let's see what we have here. The voltage from this point to this point is called the output. And the question is very simple. Sketch VO versus V input and VR as well versus V input. Ah. Add two particular values for VB when VB is equal to 10 volt and when VB is equal to minus 20 volt. And this minus 20 volt is actually your homework which I published today, homework six. So I'm, gonna, I'm not gonna solve with uh, VB is equal to minus 20. By the way, it's a little bit harder or, you know, <laughs> but it's, uh, if you just understand what's happening at VB, you will get this, you may get some blot, some blots that you, you know, that you have some doubts, but, you know, uh, it's a tricky, okay? But if you understand well, you, you're gonna do it. So don't worry, just try to understand, you know, ask me and I will be uh, responsive for you. Okay, so first, let's see, you know, do the view as this one, yes. To draw easily. And let's draw by black. So let's first, uh, analyze what we have here. So let's first draw the input. You have the something switch. written that's covered by the analog circuits. Yeah, it's the, it is the word the output. Yeah, okay. So I just write it, write it again for you. Okay, so don't worry. So my drawing is ugly, but you know, it's not that bad, I hope so. So in that particular, uh, in this uh, particular type of problems, when I ask you to sketch, and this is definitely will happen in the exam. So we, you just sketching, we are not, you know, right uh, drawing to scale. 
and it's enough one or two cycles or one and a half cycle that will be very enough. Yes, one and four. And I know that you are genius and you know, subirudic wave, so. Okay, so let's. Good. And that's of course one over 60. This is one over 120, okay. Because the frequency is 60 hertz. And this is basically 155.5, I think. And this is minus 155.5. Of course, we need only, you know, put the values only for the important points. Like, for example, maxima and minima. For the time, just put the, you know, the values of the time at, you know, half, half a cycle or full cycle, just the important points. Good. As we see here, the input is a changing, and this is a continuous change, okay? So just imagine it as a battery, and this battery is a changing, just like the previous example. And since it's a changing, for some values, Maybe the diode will be on, maybe it will be off, maybe it will be forward, maybe it will be reverse. So we need to know the input, uh, the minimum input voltage that will turn the diode on. And remember here, based on that input, for some cases, uh, we have positive input here, but this is positive. So this is forward. Basically, of course, it will be forward or reverse based also on VB. But this has a potential to turn the diode forward. And this is negative here. So it's like the, the battery has a change in terminals. So instead of having the B uh, uh, like this, uh, I'm sorry, not the B, the positive terminal of the battery like this and the negative terminals like this, it will be reversed. The negative is here and the most or the and the most of is here. That's very good. Okay, so let's calculate first. Again, the input minimum. The minimum input that will turn the diode on. That's good. Again, we go back to you know to the previous example, we know for sure that this is VB. The value of that, the voltage value of that point is VB. It's because you have a battery here, so this is larger than this by VB, by the battery value. At, and at the input minimum, the diode is just on, meaning VD is 0.7, ID tells you. So you have here VB, you have here 0.7. So if we call this A, so at that point here, VA is equal to VB plus 0.7 volt. And since ID is equal to zero, then the voltage difference or drop on the resistor is equal to zero. So the input minimum will be equal to VA will be equal to VB, VB plus point C. Okay, so the input voltage must be greater than or equal to VB plus 0.7 in order to turn the diode on. Okay. Now, let's, before any, you know, any, any, any solution, before going into uh, either I or double I, okay, 
Let's now explore what is the value of V output in both cases. When our V input is less than V input minimum and larger than V input minimum. So when V input is larger than or equal V input minimum, what will happen? The diode is on all the time. So VD is equal to 0.7 all the time. So VO, which is equal to VB plus 0.7, will be equal to VB plus 0.7. Or I'm sorry, plus VD. So and VD is equal to 0.7. So VO is, will be equal to VB plus 0.7. So once the input voltage or source exceeds VB plus 0.7, the output, I'm sorry, uh, the input, yeah, VB plus 0.7, the output will be constant equal to VB plus 0.7. How about VR? That's very easy. By Kirchhoff voltage law, VR is equal to V input minus VO, V input minus VB, Minus 0.7. So this is VR. Whenever the diode is on, whenever the input is larger than the input minimum, VO is constant, VB plus 0.7. VR is equal to the input minus VO, which is in that case v, uh, 0.7 plus VB. The second case, what will happen if the input is less than the input minimum. Diode is off, for sure. ID is zero, for sure. So VR is equal to ID, R is also zero. But we know that from Kirchhoff that the input is equal to VR plus VO. So, VO will be equal to V input. That's very simple. So when V input is less than V input minimum, VR is zero and VO is equal to V input. Whatever on the input will go to the diode, or oh, I'm sorry, so to V output, which is a diode plus, you know, the battery. So let's make a general Plotting or sketching. That's again, we are not in the problem yet. We are not on either I or double I. We are not here. This is just special cases. Okay. So let's make a general, you know, solution we can say. So what's our transition point here? What is the point at which, you know, uh, we will determine if the diode is on and off? It's the input minimum. So I'm gonna put any, choose any point. It's, be it's because it's just a sketch, it's not to scale. So this is for example, the input minimum, which is 0.7 plus VB. Any point, you choose any point. By, by the way, you can choose also point in negative. That's very valid because this is just a general, general solution. So this will be our transition point here. Good. So let's draw now or blot now VD. Sorry, VO, I'm sorry, VO. What you need to know, where is the regions at which the input is less than the input minimum? And the other regions that, at which the input is larger than the input minimum. So let's look at the plot. This is the input minimum. So all these values are or in this region, for example, all the values is less than the input minimum. That's very obvious. 
Again, in that region here, all these values is less than the input minimum. This is the most of half cycle. What about the negative half cycle? In the negative half cycle, all these values are still less than the input minimum. So basically, any, any point below here has a VM with less than VM with minimum. And any point above here, above this point, have a VM with larger than VM with minimum. Okay, let's start by the regions at which the input is less than the input minimum. Which basically, this small region here, this small region here, and all the negative half cycle region. What we have in this region? Basically, if the input is less than the input minimum, diode is off, so the output is equal to the input. So just copy and paste. Copy and paste, zero, this will be zero. Whatever, for example, one, this will be one. Two, this will be two. So just take this part, this part of the sinusoid and put it here, just to copy and paste the plot. Again here, this value here is equal to the input minimum. Oops. So this value, this is zero, this is zero, whatever in between, just to copy and paste here. This curve, is exactly that curve. This curve is exactly that curve. Copy and paste. The output equal to the input. Let's go to the negative half cycle. Again, in the negative half cycle, the input is less than the input minimum. So the output is equal to the input. Whatever the input is. Here, the input is zero, so zero. Here, for example, minus one, it will be minus one. Here, at the maximum, it is minus 155.5. Yes, it will be the same. Here again is zero. So basically, take this sinusoidal curve and put it here. This guy here, this curve here, is exactly this negative half cycle. Exactly. Just to copy and paste. How about VR? For the same region. I don't know, let's go to that one. So VR. When the input is less than the input minimum, VR is equal to zero. In that region here, the input is less than the input minimum, so VR is zero. In that small region again, the input is less than the input minimum, so v, VR is zero. And then in the whole negative half cycle, the input is less than the input minimum, so VR is zero again. That's very nice. Now to complete that, we need to draw a sketch again, the output and the R when the input is larger than the input minimum, which is only one, one region, this region, from this point to this point. All these values are actually larger than the input minimum. And what's happening in that case? When the input is larger than the input minimum, the zone, the output is constant equal to VB plus 0.7. Remember, this point here is 0.7 plus VB. And it's constant. Just a single line like this. And let's do it with, I'm sorry, with the same color. So it's to be consistent. Let's do it with green again. So 
So remember this value is VB plus 0.7. And whatever the value of V input, since it's larger than V input minimum, that will be this constant VB plus 0.7. Now VR. VR is equal to V input minus VB minus 0.7. Good. You know what that means? Just take any value from these values and subtract VB plus 0.7. So for example, let's do three points, okay? And it will be clear for you. This point in here, the beginning of this curve, the input here is equal to 0.7 plus VB. So if you subtract 0.7 plus VB, it will be zero, so zero. This point again is the same, because it has the same voltage, VB plus 0.7, so zero. The maximum, this is 155 minus five. So this will be 154.8, which is V max minus 0.7. And again, any value in between will be subtracted uh, from uh, 0.7 plus VB. So what we, you basically will have the same sinusoidal wave but shifted down by VB plus 0.7. And now, you know, the, the very nice part, Kirchhoff voltage low. We have all the time from Kirchhoff voltage law in that example, V input equal to VR plus VO. And you can look at any point here in time and you will find this satisfied. For example, if we take, for example, you know, a point like this, something in between. This point here. At this point, VR is zero. And here, whatever the value of VD, it is the same as V input. Why? Because we know in that region, this curve is just a copy and paste from that curve. How about here? Let's, for example, at the maximum here. This value is V max minus 0.7. I'm sorry, this is, I'm sorry, this should be, I'm very sorry. Uh, this should be V max minus 0.7 minus VB. I am extremely sorry, minus VB. Yes. So with this, it will be 0.7. Yeah, let's, let's forget about the actual values because VB now is just, you know, uh, a parameter. Okay, so let's go back. Yeah, so this is Vmax minus 0.7 minus VB. And what is the corresponding value here? It is VB plus 0.7. If we add Vmax minus 0.7 minus VB plus VB plus 0.7, boom, 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 boom. This is V max, then V max. How about here, for example? At this minus V max, this is minus V max. So V out is minus V max, VR is zero. If you add them together, you get minus V max. That's very nice. One more check. If you even take, so this is the input source signal, this one. 
and again by voltage divider, part of this signal goes to the output, and another part goes to the resistor. Basically, this part here, this one, is actually this one. It's exactly the same. And if we take, you know, that here, here this, this thing here, and we just put it here, it will be the input, exactly the input. So this part is exactly this part, and let's go with another color. And this part is exactly this part. Just combine them together, you will get the input. Exactly. Okay. Any question before I go to I and double I? Any question? Is it clear? Okay. I will assume that this means clear. Okay, let's do now I. Good. So in I, this will be just, you know, example for you. Example for what we have just did. I will draw again the stuff. In the exam, it's enough to draw one cycle, and I know I know that you are genius, and you are assuming that the other cycle have the same conclusion as well, because this is a periodic signal. So let me continue on that because this is also important. So if we continue, guys, in the other cycle here, we have the same. So this will continue the same conclusion exactly. Just a periodic signal. Okay, and again, this is actually this one. And it's the same for uh, VR as well. So. Okay, and this is again, this thing here is actually this thing. It's a periodic signal. So what happened in the in the, in the first cycle will happen again in the second cycle and so on. Okay, so this is Mr. V input. These, this value is 155.5 minus 155.5, okay. And, okay, the B is equal to 10. So the transition point It's just a sketch, so just to choose any point, okay. So this would be 10 plus point seven. So whenever the input is larger than 10 plus point seven, the diode will be on and the output will be equal to uh, 10 plus point seven. So let's draw. So this is 10 plus. So in that region here, the input is less than 10.7. Any value here is less than 10 plus 0.7. So just to copy and paste for V output. Copy this into here. Copy and paste. In that region again, all the values is less than 10 plus 0.7. So just copy and paste that point. All these values, the negative values are again less than 10 plus 0.7. This is one minus 55, so also this is one minus 155. And in these regions, the voltage of the VR is actually zero.
And in between, when the input is larger than all these values, have values larger than 10 plus 0.7, which is the input minimum, the output, the, the output will be constant, equal to 10 plus 0.7. And VR will be equal to any value here subtracted from 10 plus 0.7. So for example, this point is exactly at 10 plus 0.7. Subtract 10 plus 0.7, it will be zero. This value is 155.5. Subtract 10 plus 0.7 from it, it will be, for example, I don't know, it will be, let's do it pretty quick. So 145, 145.8, exactly. And again, for just, just a sketch. And basically, that stuff, that shape is ex exactly this one. Exactly. And this shape here is exactly this one. And again, if you put them together, you will get the source. And of course, this will continue forever. Okay. Okay, so what we have is still. Hmm. You guys are free today uh, between six and seven, six BM to seven BM. Anyone has any conflict between six and seven today? I wanna give you a, a small lecture, one hour lecture, so we can continue uh, the rectifiers. Okay. Okay, we gotta continue the rectification today between six and seven, okay? If you, if you couldn't find me online at that time, please send me email because I may forget. But I, of course, I will uh, create the, I will create uh, right after the lecture uh, a, Zoom, a Zoom meeting invitation and send it to you. Okay, so let's continue in that five minutes. One important uh, stuff here to consider. You guys has any, has any question about this? Anything is not clear or something? I said you must practice, you must practice a lot, okay? You must solve a lot of problems, okay? Okay, what else I wanna say here? What else I want to say? Yeah, good. So let's look deeper into this uh, example here. Yes, I have two observations. So the first one, we are saying that this is a clipping application, right? And this is actually the clipping point. So the output here is clipped at 10.7. So this is, this is the clipping. And basically 10 is the source of the battery, of the battery voltage, I'm sorry, VB source value. 
So basically, you can control the clipping point by controlling the battery itself. You can also make checks, okay? You can check if you are right or wrong by just taking any value, any input, okay? And try to calculate the corresponding values for VR and v, uh, VD. So for example, to check, to check. For example, add the input, equal to, let's say, minus 155.5, this point. So what will be our circuit? It will be like this. Minus 155.5, and this is 10. Do the trick. This can be reduced to the same, the, the following. A battery, just one battery, which will be minus 155, 50, I'm sorry, 45. Point five. You can change the polarity make the positive, you know, below and the negative above and make this positive. So this is actually reverse. So diode will be reversed. So VR will be equal to zero. Zero. So this is VR equal to zero. So VO will be equal to minus 155.5. That's right. At that point, VO is one minus 155.5 exactly as the input copy and base and VR is zero. Let's do the maximum, the other maximum. Another check at one fifty five point five. If you bring this guy here. It will be 154.5. What is still the positive polarity is near the B, negative polarity is near the N. So the diode will be forward. If we assume it's on, it will have 0.7. So VO will be equal to 0.7 plus 10, 10.7. VR will be equal to 155.5 minus 10.7. It is 145.44. or 44. Yeah, this should be 44, I think. 44, yes. I'm sorry, very sorry. 44. Point eight. Okay, so at 155, if we go down here, VD is 10.7 and VR is 144.8. Okay, so you can chop, check on your blots if it's right or wrong. Just to choose some points, important points, you know, 
maximum minimum something like the transitions these zeros or these values here okay and the on yourself so guys i will see you again today at 6 p.m okay and by the way the exam in it is in its, uh, its time so there is no postponing from the exam and no excuses okay you know two weeks ahead that the exam in the wednesday on the lab time okay try to fix all your uh, schedule so that you can catch the exam there will be no other exams okay it's only one meter i will not do two meters it's only one meter okay Try to set up your schedule, okay? You know, fix everything you have to catch the exam. If you didn't catch the well, exam... The date cannot be postponed? Sorry. No, I cannot postpone the exam. So it has to be done on the 7th of October. I don't know uh, what... Yeah, 7th of October, I think. I don't know. The, like the, it cannot the be done on the 14th or 15th or anything like that? No, no, no. It's only one time. Can it be done earlier or no? Or just only that day? Only that day. Okay, thank you. So let's make sure everything's fixed. So I'm just aware of the situation. Okay. Okay, guys. So thank uh, you. see you today at five, at six, I'm sorry, six to be him, between six and seven. We're going to just continue with these two uh, items here, rectifiers and the half rectifier. Okay. See you again. Thank you very much. Have Thank you very much for your email and make sure everything's good. Okay. Thank you.